Hey, I'm Opie and welcome to another installment of Turntable Techniques brought to you by DJ City and Beat Refinery. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to DJ house music like a dance hall DJ. So in today's music culture, we have a lot of the same things going on that were really relevant when dub music was relevant in Jamaica back in the 70s and the early 80s. A lot of people would borrow or copy from a really popular song or from musicians they were working with in the studio and then multiple different vocalists would come in and do their versions of it. This can be heard really easily with tracks like Martin Garrick's Animals with a lot of the same styles that you might hear from Calvin Harris or even some of the Duke Dumont popular deeper house tracks. As a DJ, it's a really good thing to mark popular trends and kind of move with them, but move with them in a creative way that pushes the DJ art form forward but also giving you a standard kind of template to work from. So with this technique, you can really push a lot of your tracks forward and kind of wind up combining a lot of really popular tracks together in a new and fresh and interesting way. So what I'm going to do from the beginning is play two dance hall tracks and you can kind of see how they're two distinct different tracks, but at the same time they've borrowed from each other. So in this first example, you're just going to be hearing two tracks that have really similar melodies, really sim similar rhythm patterns, but basically following a dub plate or following a rhythm, which is what a lot of popular and traditional dance hall DJs are doing. The building that blows the many times, but it's still up one more time left, because the amount of strike with up on our shoulder. Let me the sound of the same time. I want to get the so with those two tracks, they're both actually different tracks with different vocalists, but they both borrow from the same underlying rhythm. So with all of these popular house tracks basically following from the same underlying rhythm, we're going to listen to those, listen to the melodic phrasing or the rhythmic phrasing that occurs within those tracks, listen to the samples that are contained within those tracks, and even listen for the key and melody that occurs within those, and then from tracks that are produced by different artists, combine them together to create our own rhythm pack so that we can essentially run a rhythm within house music and then follow a dance hall style of DJing. So these two tracks are totally separate, produced by totally separate producers in different years. But when listened together, the rhythm that's in there is identical. So let's run the first track and listen to what that sounds like. Alright, so I hope everybody caught that rhythm. We're going to run the second track and listen to them together now. Galden, French fries alongside the Taiwan. You don't know. So you can hear that there is some subtle differences between the two tracks, but ultimately when you're listening to the snare pattern and you're listening to the kick pattern that happens on the one and the three versus the traditional four and the floor pattern that happens in a house track, I've got two tracks that I can basically pair together in a rhythm pack and then when put together in a mix, create a larger variation of my mix while still maintaining the same rhythm. This is really useful for house mixing so I can pair a lot of tracks together and, and use a continuous groove but still ultimately create more variation. By doing this I can still play electronic tracks, keep the continuous momentum or continuous rhythm that often occurs in electronic or house music but then pair it together in a quick mixing fashion so that I can keep more variation but ultimately keep a continuous rhythm throughout. Therefore pairing a hybrid EDM style with a dance hall style together. So let's break down each song individually and just listen to the drop on its own the way we did with the last two tracks. And this is the way we crash the party. So the drop on that song, yeah I do have the traditional four on the floor kick pattern but then I have that kind of really dance hall hybrid style of snare pattern that's occurring in there. All three of these tracks are going to be really percussive but all three of them are going to have that same really repetitive kind of marching snare drum style paired with that four on the floor pattern, really high energy but when paired together I'm going to follow the same rhythm. Hit it. Almost identical. Slight variation in tone, but I had the same four on the floor kick pattern with that same marching snare drum pattern in there. Let's listen to the third track and break that down and see how that sounds. Rappers ready, prepare to flash. Again, subtle differences in tone, but same four on the floor kick pattern and same marching snare drum pattern. 
Let's put it all back together in the mix and see what that sounds like. This is the way we crash the party. So you can kind of see it in an extended quick mixing fashion by pairing a rhythm pack together. I don't have to waste any time with track selection. I can quickly jump between track to track while keeping the energy really high, moving from drop to drop. This technique, again, it's more about listening to your tracks. It's really about identifying the melodic phrasing that's occurring. It's really about creating those rhythm packs for yourself. So thanks for watching this episode of Turntable Techniques. My name is Obeya. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.